I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Yes, my friends, I have returned from another personal break to welcome you back to the world of awfully good movies. And though I've been working hard to make a couple of tweaks on our show's format so that we can commemorate our 100th episode, ah! that doesn't mean we can't take some time out to also celebrate the return of the Conjuring franchise, as it spins off once again this weekend to tell us the bone-chilling story of The Nun. But long before The Conjuring movies helped turn the real-life spiritual exploits of Ed and Lorraine Warren into horror movie gold, Warner Brothers was making bank with another cinematic horror franchise that made audiences of all faves fear the devil with The Exorcist. 45 years ago, writer William Peter Blatty first collaborated with visionary director William Friedkin to turn his best-selling novel of demonic possession into one of the best horror movies of all time. But while Linda Blair may have sworn off reprising the role of Reagan McNeil after the well-known failure of Exorcist II, she did end up spewing that green pea soup from her mouth one more time in 1990 for the comedic Exorcist parody known as Repossessed. And how could this airplane-style spoof movie possibly have failed? After all, Linda Blair's co-star for this flick was none other than the most beloved actor of the spoof movie genre, the late, great Leslie Nielsen. Plus, the movie was coming out just one month after the release of The Exorcist 3, and since William Peter Blatty had returned to the franchise for that sequel, it was bound to be a big hit. <laughs> But after Exorcist 3 didn't do so hot with audiences, you can imagine that the release of Repossessed a month later went over even worse with critics and audiences. But if The Exorcist 3 can end up finding a sizable cult following in the years since it flopped in its initial release, then perhaps Repossessed will end up casting out some demons of laughter. And by the way, if you think this Nun movie looks terrifying, wait until you see the trailer they just released for the Nun sequel coming out next year, starring Sally Field. I'm not trying to see that, that's terrible. So our film opens, as The Exorcist did, in the year 1973, where an Ellen Burstyn stand-in stands outside her daughter's door, listening in on the final moments of her satanic exorcism, which is conducted here by the wackily named Father May I, who is played by Leslie Nielsen. And sadly, the only laugh that Mr. Nielsen provides in this opening flashback scene is that clearly glued on black wig of his. I'll be back. Then we fast forward to present day, where the elderly father May I is telling of his exorcism exploits to a college class. And it's here that we shall begin another round of the awfully good drinking game. So make sure you take a shot every time you see a young Willie Garson from Sex and the City pop up in the movie as one of these college students, back when he was just barely holding on to that hair. The father tells the class that the story of this famed exorcism just had a new chapter added onto it recently, as involving that now adult little girl. Once again, played by Linda Blair. What are we having? Prime ribs, sweet potatoes, green beans, and split pea soup. But who goes here by the name of Nancy Aglet? Oh. I get it. Her name was Reagan in The Exorcist, and her name here is Nancy, and you put those two names together, you get Nancy Reagan. These are the jokes, folks. Feel free to laugh anytime. Ever since her exorcism, things have been going well for not just Nancy, but also her husband and two annoying little shit kids. Until the night the Aglet family decides to tune in their TV to a husband and wife pair of scam artist televangelist named Ernest and Fanny Ray Weller as played by our old awfully good friend Ned Beatty, and an actress at the back of the VHS box doesn't even bother to name, so why the hell should I? And since Ned Beatty is the only other actor from any of the Exorcist movies who agreed to be in this spoof, he ends up being the poor schmuck who helps invoke the spirit of Satan through Nancy's TV, which allows the Prince of Darkness to once again inhabit the girl's body. Silence! One more word out of you little sacks of shit! And there'll be no more TV for you tonight! And you know what? Linda Blair does actually do this in real life to her kids whenever they ask their mom if they can watch Chained Heat. The next day, Nancy comes to her senses and asks to have a private meeting with the local priest, Father Luke Brophy. 
who was supposed to stand in here for Father Alex Karras in this movie, but who I'm pretty sure was just hired because he looks like an even blander Robert Hayes. Hey, we've got Leslie Nielsen here, so it kind of feels like you're watching Airplane again. Right, guys? Surely you can't be serious. When Nancy asks for Father Luke's help in trying to exercise her repossessed body, her eyes flicker back into Bill Bixby turning into the Hulk mode, and Satan takes back control of Nancy's body once again, which makes Linda Blair now look like a cracked out Helena Bonham Carter wearing a half ask Gamora costume. And Father Luke is forced to muster up whatever little faith he has in order to confront the repossessed Linda Blair. The Bible says that God created man in his own image. Oh yeah. Then how do you explain Pee-wee Herman? Oh well, that is an easy argument to debunk my satanic friend. That is because Pee-wee Herman is God. <laughs> It's at this point that Leslie Nielsen is no longer just the narrator of the story, but also a character in it, as Father Luke seeks out the assistance of the now-retired priest who had first cast Satan out of the girl's body. However, Father May Eye's heart is suffering from a case of I'm coming, Elizabeth, so he insists that he cannot help Father Brophy perform the exorcism, and that Luke must instead face down Satan all by himself. You could do it. You're young. You're strong. Luke your destiny. God damn you, Disney. This time you have truly gone too far with the Star Wars franchise. Hello. May the faith be with you. Star Wars Episode 9, In Color, starring Leslie Nielsen as Vice Admiral Frank Trebin. But before Luke can perform the exorcism on Nancy, he must first ask permission from a religious council and set up one of the most jarring scene transitions I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> Oh wait, why the fuck is Leslie Nielsen beatboxing now? I'm gonna tell you all about a mother who's fly. Oh wait, why the hell has Father Brophy magically appeared out of thin air during this college lecture to perform this rap song instead of Leslie Nielsen? All the Catholics in the house say ho! Oh! And why is Leslie Nielsen now just a pitcher? And seeing as that musical rap number was the work of the actual devil, the Vatican instead hands the exorcism over to Ernest and Fanny Ray Weller, who will not only attempt to banish Satan's soul out from Nancy's body, but also broadcast the ceremony on live TV while simultaneously conducting a telethon for their financially struggling ministry. Let's see Geraldo Rivera top this. Where did they get a load of me? Oh, come on, movie. Out of all the lines you could have referenced from Tim Burton's Batman, you didn't go with you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? <laughs> you get it? Because devil! Now, I will admit that there are some fleeting bright spots in the midst of this shitty joke parade. One of them being Linda Blair. She is clearly having a lot of fun here getting to mock the role that had not only helped launch her career, but also helped sink her chances of movie stardom. And I did have a little fun watching her play the devil as basically a female version of Beetlejuice. Oh, sorry for the young priest's emotional outburst. He hasn't done much TV, you know. Where do you think you're going? I'm going to Disneyland. You can't burn what you don't have. Burn that. Nice fucking model! Plus, I have always loved the comedic work of Leslie Nielsen during my childhood, and surely enough... Don't call me Shirley. He does end up giving the movie some of its funniest jokes. Is it true that priests and nuns have orgies in the Vatican? What? Wasn't it hard to, to live with yourself after completely wimping out and allowing a wuss like Father Luke to go up against Satan all by himself? Next question. But, seeing as this movie needs to pad itself out to 84 minutes somehow, we also have to see Leslie Nielsen embarrass himself in an endless montage scene where Father May I heads down to the gym to help exercise his fragile heart, alongside his personal trainer, Jake Steinfeld, because a significant amount of people still know who the fuck that is in 2018. I don't want to go to the women's gymnasium. Ah, uh, you're ageless. This is the 90s. Everybody's doing it together. Come on. Yeah, no shit it's the 90s, because nothing is more 90s than watching Leslie Nielsen in pink spandex working out in a gym with Body by Jake to the tune of Technotronics Pump Up the Jam. <laughs> Seriously, I think making Leslie Nielsen do this shitty movie just might fall under the category of elderly abuse. Oh, mommy. Oh, mommy, no. They're not my mommy. Oh, mommy. 
Now here's where the movie finally gets to Ned Beatty and his wife performing Nancy's exorcism on live TV. Wow, this really is reminding me a lot of that classic William Friedkin movie, Deal of the Century starring Chevy Chase. And after Ned Beatty announces to the audience that Nancy's exorcism is being watched by the biggest TV audience in history, Nancy finally breaks free from her restraints so she can broadcast her satanic power over America's airwaves. Oh, and also Satan finally doles out some poetic justice to these two phony priests. What do I do with a couple of jackasses like you? Oh no, you stuck the two of them in a cheap donkey costume you bought from Party City. Come on guys, you couldn't at least go for the obvious deliverance reference? And literally turn Ned Beatty into a squealing piggy? Then we see the Pope arriving at the TV studio, alongside his fellow religious leaders of the world, to assemble the Amen Vengers. And this is the point where Leslie Nielsen remembers that he is still in this movie, and decides to perform one more exorcism on Nancy, after giving us all of the Rocky parody jokes that were deemed too unfunny for the script of Ricky 1. But then we finally arrive at the movie's big exorcism scene, as the devil is ready to take on both Brophy and May I to fight one more time for control of Nancy's body. And I do have to admit that some of the funnier moments of the movie are when it decides to stop stealing visual puns off of old Far Side strips and actually parody some famous moments from The Exorcist. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure that The Exorcist did not have none other than Mean Gene Okerlund and Jesse Ventura cameoing on the sidelines of this exorcism to provide some WrestleMania-style commentary. He's down! He's out! It's a heart attack, Mean Gene! Massive cardiac! But the movie soon gets right back to hurting you, as Linda Blair keeps using her demonic powers to dress Leslie Nielsen up in yet another wacky costume or questionable racist stereotype. Who are you? I'm your worst nightmare. Well, goddamn, guys, Stallone is really looking out of shape for this fifth Rambo movie. Ah, perfect, he looks way better. And if you thought this movie didn't already resemble a bad Christian rock music video... <laughs> what are we gonna do? We tried everything. Everything the devil hates. Prayers, holy water, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Rock and roll! We never tried that. I hate rock and roll. That's right, Satan's one weakness is none other than that accursed rock and or roll. Which means Luke and May I decide to torture Satan with a musical performance of the old time rock and roll classic, Devil with a Blue Dress On. Because devil! And here's where we see Leslie Nielsen channeling the spirit of Weird Al and impersonating some of the most famous musicians of the day, such as Faith Era George Michael, David Byrne of the Talking Heads, Bootsy Collins, and even later era Miles Davis. And he's got both Flock of Seagulls playing on the drums and Pope John Paul II on fucking rhythm guitar. That's disgusting. So unless any of you out there would like to see what an exorcist porno spoof would look like without any porno, then you should banish Repossess back to movie hell where it belongs. I'll be back. Ooh, shit. But if you do watch it, make sure you take one last double shot when you hear the original song that the movie plays over its closing credits, which helped the film win its only Razzie Award for Worst Song. The was gone jack now in fact he's back and mad as a black panther like before the curse will persist like part one of the exorcist testing them soon possessing them in no time at all he makes hitler look like lucille ball so i said my kudos to you mr chris lavrar i cannot wait for your eventual collaborative album with kendrick lamar and on the nudie watch i am pretty astonished that a movie that has such significant amounts of bare breastage not to mention a gag involving an exercising woman's increasing inflating boobs can still get away with a goddamn PG-13 rating. What the hell is this label on the back cover? This motion picture parody is in no way connected to the makers or writers of The Exorcist or any of its sequels. Oh, thank heavens they let us know about that. And here I was scared that William Freakin himself may have suggested that The Exorcist could have used the scene where Linda Blair screws with the priest by dressing up like an ice cream cone. Let me! Let me! Let me! Let me! It's the Cornelingus move!
The Conalingus move. That's disgusting. On the enjoyableness continuum scale from Boulder Bruce, Repossessed is a movie that sucks way more than just cocks in hell. And deliver unto this evil a blessing of two out of ten. What an excellent day for a shitty exorcist parody. I'm Jesse Shade for JoeBlow.com, and I am glad to be back on Awfully Good Duty yet again. Thanks to all of you viewers out there for your patience while I got my life sorted out, as well as those of you out there who have stuck with this show through these past 100 episodes of Awfully Good Movies. And I can only hope that my next 100 episodes will have significantly less Leslie Nielsen twerking in them. That's disgusting. Cornelingus! The gym is enlisting, moving quick and building confidence, getting swift and ready for butt kicking at its best, cause Nancy's been repossessed. <laughs>